How do I get more referrals without hounding my clients? Mm, got a tough love answer for you on this one. Here's why you're not getting the referrals that you want to be getting, what you need to do to get them, and how we need to think about this thing so it's not so darn difficult. Hit subscribe for weekly videos to grow your consulting business without exhaustion and click the bell for notifications of future videos. Here's the first thing I want to say about referrals. Nobody owes you any referrals. Nobody owes you this. It's nobody's job to make sure you have all the referrals you need. And it's super annoying and burdensome to expect your clients to be doing this for you. If I'm in the position where somebody's constantly coming to me and quote unquote hounding me, I do feel hounded. If they're not giving you referrals, that means they don't want to be giving you more referrals. They're giving you as many as they feel they can. We can't force them to give them. So I think it's a complete disservice to them and to yourself to believe that people owe you referrals and that you should be building your business by referrals. Nobody's responsible for growing your business except for you. To me, referrals are a lot like my pandemic tomato garden. Like for about a month, we had more tomatoes than we could handle. I had so many tomatoes, I was giving them away to friends and to neighbors, and we didn't need to buy any tomatoes at the store for all that time. It was really great. Two months from then, when it was winter and I didn't have any tomatoes anymore, I had to go back to the grocery store to buy my tomatoes. A grocery store is a thing that's in my control. I can consistently go there and purchase the things I need. Tomatoes are like a bonus. It was great. And maybe if I do a really great job, then year after year, I'll get better at tomato growing. And I might never need to purchase tomatoes from the store anymore. Maybe. But more likely, I'm always going to have to supplement my tomatoes with something from this store. I want you to think of referrals as that kind of a bonus it's a gift from the universe. It's a gift from people who are around you. And we can't expect it to be the sustaining diet for our business because, okay, maybe somebody's business does do that. And I do have clients whose entire business is referrals. They do no marketing. But the ones who have done that have spent years building that base of referrals so that today they hardly need to do any marketing of their own at all. Maybe someday you'll get to that. But what I hear in this question is, I don't have the time to wait for that to happen. I need to grow my business now. It's not a solid strategy to be relying on something that's that far out of your control and which is pretty much a passive thing of like, I wait for somebody else to send me business. I wait to find out if they're going to do that or not. The thing that especially I think is difficult about referrals is that when I give a referral, I'm taking a personal risk right? I'm taking a personal or a professional risk because you come to me and I'm going to send someone to you. So have you ever sent a referral and had it go poorly? I have. I had someone say, hey, I need somebody who can do this job for me. And I said, oh, I actually know someone who does that. I'm excited, right? And I connect them. Well, it turns out that the person I send over doesn't do a great job. And the first person comes and complains to me. And I think, oh, okay, well, sorry, buyer beware. But what really happens? Do I go to my first person and give her feedback about it? No, I don't, because I'm not in the job of mentoring random people. And I just never tell her again, but I also never send her any more referrals. So if anything weird has gone on here, I'm out of it. It was a personal slash professional risk to me. It didn't go great, and I don't want to do that anymore. So maybe as a person, and then this is not me, but there are some people like this, maybe as a person, what I learned from this is I'm never putting myself in that situation. I don't need that risk. The benefit of you finding each other isn't big enough for me to really tolerate that risk. I personally don't feel that way, but if you're not getting referrals from people who have ever given them to you before or from people who have never given them to you, it may be because the risk is too high for them to do this. Asking for a referral, if I'm giving you a referral, I'm, in a lot of cases, I'm doing you a favor. And maybe nobody owes you a favor. A favor is usually something that we give with, if someone asks for it or if they've done something wonderful for us. So think a bit. Have you done cool stuff for people that makes them want to reciprocate in any way? Do they want to do a favor back for you? So it can be in the professional setting or it can be in the personal setting. But there's this little like Cialdini reciprocity thing here that can happen, which is maybe I feel like I owe you something. And I'm like, cool, I will think about who I could send to you. But it's very hard to come up with spontaneous referrals. 
If we look at when and why and where people give referrals, it's usually occasion-based. There's usually specific times and situations in which that happens. Here's what I think they are. The most compelling situation and time where I see referrals happen is when it solves a problem for the actual person. I have a problem in my specific life or business. And when you say, can you refer someone to me? I go, oh, actually, yes. My problem employee needs coaching. And you've said I'd like more referrals. And I go, awesome. I have somebody specifically right here I'm giving to you as the referral. Yes, it was timely, meaning I had this already as a problem. And the need is specific and relevant. Those are the times where I see most referrals happen. It isn't like, hmm, I was just thinking and you came to mind and I was thinking like, I can introduce you to somebody, not that it's timely or relevant right now. So very specifically, there's a gap in my life. I need to solve a problem in my personal life or my business. Here's a specific example. I have a client who works with nonprofits. She's doing executive leadership development with them. She has a situation here where they know that their books are a mess and they're really needing to bring someone in. Ha <laughs> ha. She makes a referral to another one of my clients who specializes in doing CFO work for nonprofits. So she brings her in. That referral, it's not a spontaneous situation. It's not like I thought you two should meet. She called out to her because she was in a literal situation in which she personally is affected by whether this referral works out or not. This is when referrals work best. The next best situation is when I can solve a problem for another person. It's a little of the like make me a hero thing. So I meet someone, they say, oh my gosh, our team, everyone's fighting, nobody can get along. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm their colleague and I go, hey, I used to work with so-and-so and they could actually help you with that. And this person says, cool. And then we do the introduction. So this is not solving my personal problem, but it's a relevant and timely situation in which somebody that I feel really good about could come in. That's another time for a referral. This relevant timeliness, I think, is really important. At no time here am I actually doing a favor for anybody. In the first situation, I'm like, yikes, I'm in a mess. The second situation, someone I feel some sort of connection to is in a mess, and I'm solving that problem. Referrals need to solve a problem. The third thing I think here is really more about reciprocity slash altruism. So I do it for, let's say, good karma. You've asked me to give you a referral. And I think, I can do this. Let me think hard about who I might introduce you to. And either I just do it for the good karma points of like, the universe, maybe someday will send me something because I've done a good thing here. Or maybe I think, huh, I'm doing something cool for you. Like, maybe you'll do something good for me. This kind of general reciprocity feeling. And then the third thing is, you have a referral program and you pay people for referrals. And I think, huh. I'm going to think hard because I'm, you know, it'd be nice to get a little extra cash here on the side. Who do I know who I could send to you? I think most people, that's actually their lowest possible motivator. A lot of business people will set up their businesses to where if I know I'm going to send you referrals and on an ongoing basis, I might actually set up a referral arrangement. But it's usually the business situation comes from the fact that I see that this is solving an ongoing problem in my business and I can do this. I don't think that's a reason for people to give you referrals in general. In the referrals episodes that I've done, I've talked about having financial remuneration for people who send you referrals when you want to set this up as strategic alliances or referral partners and having this as a specific strategy. This will get you more referrals, but it's not the kind of referrals that you're referring to in this question, which is I want my clients to more spontaneously refer other people they know to me. So watch that episode for more on how to set up financial referral partnerships. In order to get more spontaneous referrals from our clients, we have to do things differently. So that's the strategic way I think referrals work. We've covered like the mindset, what I think you need to believe. The second one is how we need to figure out in our business why referrals happen when they do. And third, let's look at the actions. I have a bunch of people write in and say, I like the shows where you just give me something to do and I can take some specific actions as a result. Here's your three actions as a result of this. When something isn't happening in our business, we need to return to the fundamentals. It's not a complicated marketing strategy. It's not a complicated referral strategy. It's let's get back to the basics. What's basic number one? Who are your perfect clients? What's their need? What are their challenges? When do they need you and someone like you? When do they encounter these other people that you want to be sending referrals to you? When could you encounter these perfect clients? When people are like, how do I get in front of these people? Like, where do they hang out? 
I have no idea. You are your own expert on your perfect client. And if you don't know, you have to go and study them. And I want you to study them like a biographer, you know, like David McCullough I've referred to before because I adore him. He wrote biographies on like Jefferson and Adams and Abigail Adams and the Brooklyn Bridge. Like he has studied people and things and times in our country more than the people who knew them at the time knew them. Like he has a deep knowledge of them. We need that kind of a deep knowledge of our own target audience. I can tell you where women consultants are spending their time online and where they go and hang out. Like I know this from studying my clients and potential clients. You need this encyclopedic specific knowledge of where your clients are so you can overlap with them. And so that when you have a message to them, it's going to resonate because you know what those problems are. If you're not getting referrals, it's because something's broken down in that. You don't know what the problem is. You're not communicating that clearly enough. You're not ever encountering them where they might find that message. There's a breakdown in this fundamental piece. The second fundamental thing, you need a major marketing strategy, a major client attraction strategy that is not referrals. Ideally, you'd have two of these. If we go back to our investor who was looking at your business and they wanted to invest in it, would they say, well, you only get clients through referrals? No, we won't. If you said, yeah, I also do X, they would say, "Mm mm-hmm, okay. But if you said, I have three things that are sources of leads for me, then you don't necessarily have to develop those all at once, but I want you to specifically have an active, a proactive, not passive receptive, a proactive marketing tactic that you're doing that is going to bring clients to you. Networking all day long, getting in front of, crossing paths with your perfect client. Remember where they are? We're going to study where they are and then we're going to go there. But they're at country clubs and I hate country clubs. Figure it out, right? Make it work. They're at conferences and I'm an introvert. We're going to figure it out. We're going to make it work. You've got to overlap with them in some way. So I love networking for all the things, whether I love networking or not, It's a great way to intersect with your people. Yes, you can network online. It's just it dilutes the impact of this strategy. But whatever you do, whether it's a content marketing strategy, whether it's networking, whether you're going to do speaking, whether you're going to do publishing and being in multiple publications, you've got to have a way that clients are coming to you that isn't just referrals. You'll feel so much better and more empowered when you have a way to bring clients to yourself. Okay, last thing, and it's the simplest, not necessarily the easiest, very, very simple. To get consistent referrals, you have got to have a brand identity and a marketing message that is crystal clear. People know exactly who to send to you. They know exactly why to send to you. You're going to fill in the blank at the end of this. A good referral for me is, and then you're going to describe that person with crystal clarity. It can't be anybody who, no, it's not anybody. It can't be like companies that have more than 150 people but are struggling with. No, no, no. Hone it down. Really, really make it clear. It may not be the message that's on your website, but when you're talking to one person, especially one person who is a client, as you've indicated, a client that you've worked with, what are the commonalities? They need to be able to recognize a good referral so they can send them to you. I would say 70% of the time, people don't send referrals. It's because they just don't want to. Life is too busy. They're not even thinking about it. They haven't got time for that. They don't owe you anything, et cetera. And 30% of the time, they're just not really sure exactly who they should send. A good referral for me is, I'm going to model it for you. A good referral for me is a woman consultant who's been struggling with the revenue roller coaster, wants to get off the revenue roller coaster, and would love to build a profitable and joyful consulting business. That's a good referral for me. On that note, I love hearing your questions. I hope this has been helpful, even though I've been a little scoldy, because I want you to be rich and I don't want you to be passive and in a situation where you're waiting for other people to run your business for you, run your marketing for you. That's your job and you can do it. And then you can have a wonderful bumper crop of tomatoes that are just like a special treat. Those wonderful bonus referrals of people coming in. We don't need those to sustain our business, but it's really great when they come in. And you can be grateful and excited about them instead of feeling the burden of trying to make serendipity happen. If you're ready to level up your consulting business, and I know you are, then head on over to samanthahartley.com super and download one of those cool free resources I have there for you. With that, I'm wishing you a profitable and joyful consulting business. 
Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click the bell for notifications. And here are a couple of related episodes that will help you to build an even more profitable, joyful consulting business.